welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host, Grandma Gail. So this week we talk to the Woods. I love when we do other families because we get to see their dynamic. And they were really a wonderful family. Mother, Two sisters and a mother and both all from Toronto. Uh, one lives now in New York. And I were, feel like people from Canada really are nicer. I know that's a, that's a generalization, generalization, but I but think they are nice. They, they are so nice. And Lexi is like has over a million followers on Instagram and you would never know. She's so humble and so sweet. And, and they're all very supportive of yes, each other, which yes. is really, really nice. I think that the audience will really enjoy mm-hmm. hearing them. And, uh, and uh, they're so funny because they've, you know, dated a lot of people and they tell some of their stories and some celebrities as well. But um, they shared stories about snooping. And which I didn't know what that was, really. You know, fi- yeah. someone you're dating, doing a little digging to see if they've been up to anything bad, going through their phone, things like that. Is that something you've ever done? No. Well, first of all, I didn't have any phones when we were Yeah, dating. but you can still snoop. You know, you, no, you find a earring under the bed or things. Uh, the, none of those things existed when I when I was dating. Oh. And I certainly didn't look up under anybody's bed. I wasn't interested. But I think we should listen to them today and enjoy it and get a good laugh at yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it's such an innate thing for people. I think, like, if you're sitting there and someone's phone is just sitting there unlocked, you have the urge to pick it up and go through it. Well, that's the problem with these phones today. I mean, your entire life is in that phone. And if somebody really wants to snoop, they Mm -hmm. really... They'll find it. They'll find it. Okay, Kim, let's talk to the girls. Okay, guys, we are joined by the ladies of the 6 and 9 podcast, Lexi, Tiffany, and their mom, Shannon. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much for having us. So let's start with a little bit of intros for both of you so everyone can get to know your voices also as you're speaking. Can you each introduce yourselves, your name, your age, and where you all are from? Oh, and your current relationship status. I'm Lexi Wood. I am 24 years old. We are all from Toronto. And my current relationship status (laughs) is single yet severely complicated. (laughs) Join the group. (laughs) As always. Um, and I am Tiffany. I am 27 and I am single and like not complicated at all. <laughs> and we're all from Toronto. And I'm Shannon. I'm 50 and um, I've been married for approximately 184 years. <laughs> you, you, Nobody's I, longer than me. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's just fine. <laughs> so Shannon, I want to start with how you met their dad. So we our high school sweethearts. We are as corny as that sounds. Um, I actually met him on the first day of 11th grade. And I did, I looked at him and I was like, that's him. He's the one. And I actually was like, gosh, you know, I'm just, I wasn't even 16 yet. I was like, oh, I wish I hadn't met him so soon, but here he is, my husband. (laughs) Very nice. That's, that's like your mom and dad. Yeah, they they were 18 in college. But that's all right. I guess when you know, you know, but like Tiffany, do you believe in love at first sight? That's a good question. (laughs) Um, I feel like, yeah, I do. Cause I've seen it with my parents and I feel like you feel like instant connections with people and you always hope that things work out, but they don't always work out. So even if you feel love at first sight, it's not necessarily like that soulmate love, but I do. I think I believe in love at first sight. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a lot more complicated now. That's the issue. You know, it was a simpler time when your mom saw your father for the first time. There wasn't the the phones. It wasn't all this texting back and forth. So I I think we're going to get into that later on. Lexi, I followed you for so long on social media. First of all, you're so gorgeous. It's like everything. I can't even post on Instagram because I like We'll just be like, uh, it'll never be Lexi, but oh, no, no, you're literally perfect. I'm like, post more, please bless our feeds. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure there are people sliding into your DMS all the time. Like, would you ever consider going on a date with somebody who did message you on Instagram? Well, what's actually funny is I've met most of my boyfriends through Instagram. So my very first boyfriend, um, we met on Instagram and we ended up dating for like a year and a half. Mm. Um, and then I've actually, most of my like my favorite relationships I've actually met on Instagram it's still kind of like a mutual like we have a lot of mutual friends right we haven't seen each other out or anything but we've like always heard of each other so it's not necessarily somebody super random um but I mean I feel like yeah I would 
I would definitely say someone on Instagram. We always say Lexi's, um, you know, dating app is Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, because she doesn't use any no. other apps. No, just just purely Instagram is my my Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> I met my boyfriend through TikTok, so it's a similar situation. (laughs) I definitely, I need to get on my TikTok game. (laughs) I I just, I'm struggling with it right now. I'm just kind of like, I need to like learn all these dances. I'm like, (laughs) it's a lot, but I'm trying to find my TikTok niche. Exactly. Um, I do feel like, because I've always been like everything that just, I want everything to come very like authentic to me with whatever I'm posting, whether it's a collaboration or so I'm like, I don't, I'm not a dancer. I don't want to be like right. popping on TikTok. Yeah. So I'm definitely trying to find whatever comes more like most authentic to me. And then I'm going to just go ham with the post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, it's the same with well, us. Right. Like we're on, I talk grandma what TikTok is and now we're on there and are following. Us. So, so good. good. So, so good. good. So we're amazing. laughing. We're laughing because I didn't think anybody was interested in what I had to say. And I guess a lot of people like it. So we're continuing. Yeah, exactly. But we're not, not doing dances, no, you know. We're so definitely not doing yeah. dances. So you'll have to drag grandma around in a bath. <laughs> Well, you know that chocolate Barbie trend with like the head bob that's oh going gosh. around. I was I, begging her to do it, and she wouldn't do no, it. No, I me. won't. I'm not going to get. To, I'm not going there. I, I held up a jacket while you were born. <laughs> now, I, explain to our viewers because a lot of the people don't aren't familiar with your Instagram and your and your whole podcast thing. What actually do you girls um, do? What is your specialty? What's your little niche in uh, on your podcast? Is it fashion? Is it advice what what do you do so it's kind of a little bit of everything basically the whole point of our podcast is to break down the barriers of family dynamics and family communication I think that there's such like a people look at like our family dynamic is kind of like a weird thing because we're so open with our family we all, all become kind of like friends too so I think it's not common and it should be more common to be super close with your family and to be able to have that open communication So the whole purpose of our podcast was to give a space for that. And if people couldn't come to their own families with the types of discussions that we're having, they could feel like they were a part of our family. So I also feel like we're all very normal people living in kind of like with very not normal career choices. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like things that we go through, most girls, most guys, most everyone kind of goes through it, but it's kind of like a little taboo to talk about. So we're like, you know what, let's just make everything very normal. Mm-hmm. and out in the open which is great and it's nice to see a nice family that's able to communicate like we do we mm-hmm. feel we do and it's yeah. uh, I think a lot of people don't have that and that's why they're finding our podcasts and your podcast so appealing to them mm-hmm. why is it called six and nine so, it was, so <laughs> yeah, you, well, yeah. I'll start out I've, I've always been a stay at home mom. So we it's, we're very um, untraditional, traditional family. So we were always when the girls were growing up, you know, I'd have cookies after school, um, you know, dinner at six. Mm -hmm. And then as they got older, um, and became of drinking age, then we started having cocktails together. (laughs) So So we always say like pre drinks are at nine dinners at six. So that's where six and nine kind of came from. And then our dad was born in 1969. And then six and nine is just different perspectives of like the same thing. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Okay. So were both of the girls always super open with you or was one more than the other growing up? Always both of them. We just always had conversations there was never, like Tiff said, there was never anything taboo. And, you know, as they got older, you know, that their friends started coming to us and and saying even more things. I used to say, sometimes I wish they weren't so open (laughs) because the things that they they would come to me with, I'd be like, oh my gosh, am I blushing? I I couldn't be like, you know, oh, that's uncomfortable. I'd be like, no, absolutely natural. Everything's just perfect, you know? Right. Um, well, you know, it was interesting because we spoke to a gynecologist and what she was saying on the podcast is very much what you were just saying, that it would, it, her primary hope is that mothers or fathers will talk to their children about sex, about, mm-hmm. you know, premarital issues and about before they go to college, but while, while, even while they're in high school, so that they have a knowledge of things and they have to be open and well, talk and to each other. Well, she said not to be too giddy about about it as right. a parent just to be like okay thanks for coming to me exactly yeah. exactly and that's exactly like I said you know they would they would come to me and I'd just be like oh yeah it's no big deal meanwhile inside I'm thinking oh my god <laughs> you, know? you did the best thing you did it absolutely correctly mm-hmm. yeah. so let's dive into it what are both of your types in men 
Lexi, you can go first. I actually have no type. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing. Like the guys that I've dated, honestly, like I couldn't find a type except they all have tattoos. <laughs> it's the weird thing. I'm just like, I just don't like people that don't have tattoos. Like, like boys that will talk to me, if they don't have tattoos, I'm just like, there's something give missing. Give it a little bit more spice. Yeah, I'm like, just give me, give me some more edge. Um, that's the only common thing that all these boys have. Um, could they have a stick on tattoo? <laughs> could we just right? I'm not opposed to an odd face tattoo, depending, <laughs> depending on yeah. what the vibe is. Um, yeah, the more tattoos, the better. Um, I love them. I'm like, woo, tattoos. Let's, let's hear it for the boys with the tattoos. But, um, honestly, I just like a nice boy. Like as much as it's cheesy to say like, oh, I want like the good boy. I really do. Like, I don't think good guys are like, like some of the, it's like, oh, good guys finish last. In my books, I'm like, you guys are going straight to the top. Like you guys are finishing first oh. every day. Yeah. And somebody just like that can, I can be silly with. I'm a really silly person. I'm like always dancing around the house. And I just want somebody that I can be just as silly and funny with. That's, that's a good answer. Yeah. I'd say that's like my number one thing. Silly and tattoos. <laughs> what about you? I think, okay. So what I think in my head that my type is, is like a Jason Momoa, like caveman looking man. And what my type actually is, is like Abercrombie model boy. <laughs> They're like the cleanest, most clean cut, like boring looking boys ever. Um, so physically, I think it's one thing, but it's really not. I need to like opt for a little bit more, maybe a little bit more hair, some more beards. Um, and then like Lexi said, we're both, we've never been into like the bad boy no. thing. It's kind of been like, in her case, it's the good boys that look like bad boys. Yeah. <laughs> in my case, it's the good boys that look like good boys. Yeah. <laughs> Janet, how often do they bring boys home to you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, so because we're so close and like, even the other night we were going out with um, a friend of Lexi's and, and then a friend, friend of Tiffany showed up and he's like, oh my gosh, your parents are here. Like, oh, this is so weird. Like in, you know, with my family, like you don't meet the parents for months and months and months. And it was just like, well, we're just out drinking, <laughs> we're just out hanging out, you know? But so, yeah, we meet them right away, like right away. And then I get so emotionally involved and attached. I'm like, this is my son. This is my son. And then it's like a week later, they're like, no, mom, like that was he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> You'll <laughs> never see him again. <laughs> and I agree with you that that's that should be a norm. I, I think uh, waiting till you get engaged to meet a parent is so ridiculous. Uh, yeah. And it shouldn't be because you know what? There are red flags that parents sometimes see that you don't see as a younger generation. But the thing is, sometimes, like, let's say this happens and then you say a red flag that I didn't realize, then I'll never be able to get it out of my head, whether it's that's true. true. <laughs> well, that's true. But yeah. sometimes that red flag is, is seen by an older adult mm -hmm. and, and is important. And, you know, in your delirium of love, you don't sometimes pick it up. And I do think that it's nice to have a feedback. You don't mm -hmm. have to take it literally. You don't have to abide by it. But I think you should listen to it because parents and grandparents usually see through other people's uh, problems a little more readily than you would. Yeah, yeah totally one agree. more thing about that. Um, for me, it's almost the opposite of like the red flag. It's like, I'll not feel a super close connection with somebody. And then I'll be like, once I see them with my family, like maybe I'll like them more. So mm -hmm. for me, it's like, when I see people with my family, it makes me like connect to them more and want to like, like so them they can more. get along. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You, it's important to you, your family unit. It's wonderful. Yeah. Lexi, is one parent more critical about your dates than the other, like your mom or your dad? I would say probably my dad. Like my dad will be like, does he have neck tattoos? And I'm like, <laughs> maybe, possibly. possibly. <laughs> and then my dad is like, he pretends to be like the like dad judgmental. But then as soon as the boy walks in, he's like their best friend. Yes. Yeah. Like he's just like, oh my man what's up? Like, and he's like, like all over them. Um, my dad always said, he's like, I always wanted all girls because I knew the boys would come one day. And he's like <laughs> such a girl dad. So he's, like, he puts on this like fake front that he is like going to like dad him away. And then I swear to God, my dad ends up liking them more than he likes us. <laughs> um, 
And then my mom is always just like, oh, the, the more, the better. She's <laughs> like, she gets so emotionally involved. She's like, you are my son. <laughs> this is okay. So both of my parents, I would say my dad pretends more though. <laughs> I also see through people better than your dad. Yeah. I, she has I, the best instincts and sometimes it kills me because I I'm know. like, why? I had the nicest boyfriend ever and he did everything for me, like best relationship. My mom's like, no, there's something about him. Mm-hmm. And it turned out he was like cheating on me the whole time. And I didn't see any of the signs. And she was just like, she just had this feeling. Mm-hmm. So whoever you guys end up with will join the family very easily and organically. When it comes to the other way around, have you ever thought like, oh, now I'm going to have to spend time with somebody else's family if we become serious? Like I'm such a homebody with my family. I'm like, I just want every, like all the holidays to be at mine. Not, you yeah, know. Yes, exactly. You have so to share, can they? You have to share. Yeah. <laughs> I know I don't like sharing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I do struggle with that. Cause like, I love my family so much, but I do hope that the person that I'm with has an amazing family too. And I hope that we can kind of combine things and spend time all together. Like that's my mm-hmm. ultimate dream. Yeah. Um, the best. So I will say, yeah, yeah. I want, I want like him to be close to his family, me to be close to mine and each other be close to each other's families. And then on like Thanksgiving and stuff, it's like, we can all just come together as like one ginormous happy family. We do. Yeah, that's what we do. That's true. Yeah, we're lucky in that way. Yeah, and it's also geographically right. uh, close to each other. It makes it also uh, an easier thing. True. Yeah, it's probably hard for us. Yeah, I was yeah. just gonna say, like, I live in New York. They live in Toronto. Most of the guys that I date are, depending on their careers, but a lot of the time they're in the like the some type of industry as mm-hmm. well. So we're always all traveling so much. So. Mm-hmm. Location wise, maybe difficult, but I'm hoping you work on it. You'll work yeah, on it. Exactly. Toronto is such a beautiful city. I took a boat ride around because we had very dear friends that lived in Toronto. And many years ago, we used to go up every summer and we used to take the boat around the lake and it was beautiful. It's such a, it really is. And they have the best bagels. Is that yeah. Oh my God. They've got the best bagels in the whole world. They have like soft better than centers. New York? I think they're better wow. than New York. He used to ship them to us. Really? Yeah. Because we've got, became addicted to those bagels, but uh, that's the one thing I loved about it. I mean, I loved everything about Toronto. It's a beautiful city. Oh, that's so nice to hear. We yeah. love it. Yes, I really. love Toronto. I literally go back and now that I live in New York too, when I used to live in LA, it'd be harder for yeah. like work and stuff. But now I'm like, I'm going home on the weekend. Mm-hmm. I'm that's like, amazing. I love Toronto. Is there any advice that your mom has given you about relationships that's really like stuck with you? <laughs> so my mom always says never let anything go unsaid and to always speak your mind and to speak your feelings and to lay it all out on the table because she never wanted us to have like regrets in relationships. And I think a lot of the time it's easy to just let things go and to just be like, oh, it didn't work out. But when you're putting your heart into everything and you're communicating everything you need to say, you know that it didn't work out from a lack of your own communication or a lack of expressing yourself. So I think that's probably the best advice. Just never let anything go unsaid because then you'll have like closure. Yeah, you'll have closure within yourself knowing that you did everything and said everything that you were feeling and thinking then like needing outside closure, like needing like the guy or girl to be like, to do something so messed up that it gives you closure. You just know like, oh, I did everything that I can. And like, I'm, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is the best advice. I loved your episode on snooping. You (laughs) each told amazing stories, but I know you each have your own story. So whoever wants to take it first, but you're going to die from these. They're crazy. Okay. Yeah. You do yours first. So my snooping story um so I had just so me and this guy had known each other for like 10 years like a very long time we'd been like texting and whatever and um I just like never really gave him a chance and then finally we were both home at the very start of the pandemic and Toronto had like just been slowly opening up again and we had been texting through like probably like a month um and like I wasn't comfortable to go and hang out yet but then once Toronto kind of opened up I was like okay yeah I'll hang I'll hang out Mm -hmm. so we probably like what three times we hung out and then I we got dinner and I ended up just like having a little slumber party at his house no funny business guys nothing (laughs) happened um we literally just slept which honestly now I'm like oh is that true or I thought you were joking no I actually we literally did nothing but we had like literally spooned (laughs) <laughs> we're like we spooned for like 20 minutes and then we just both rolled over and yeah. then he went to work in the morning and he's like make yourself at home I'll be back in like an hour he had to go to training and then he's like I'm like there's like this vanity makeup vanity he's like make yourself at home get ready whatever and so I was like perfect I opened up one of the drawers like put my makeup in and I see this like little envelope and there's like a polaroid of just like 
naked boobs. Oh no. And, and I was like, no. oh no, like what? <laughs> I do? It's eight o'clock in the morning. I send the picture to my mom. I was like, <laughs> wrong. Mom, yeah, just no, just no text message before, just a picture of some naked body. And I'm like, what do I do with this? And then she's like, well, you need to talk to him about it, whatever. And then something just like tweaked in me. And I was like, I need to Please. see if there's something else going on. So I'm looking through the other drawers, but like, just like peeking. I'm like, I need to look under the bed. I'm, I'm like, it's funny. Like, what else can you find that that's just so nuts? <laughs> yeah and then I was like is this like a whole girlfriend situation like I need to look further into this because like am I the side piece is she the side piece I'm like one of us is the side <laughs> yeah. and I need to know who it is so then I just kept looking kept looking then finally he came home and I was like sitting there with the with the boobs and this little thank you letter <laughs> and I'm like what is this and then he's like saying like all the stuff he's like oh it's nothing it's nothing whatever it ended up being something, but a year later, the girl DM'd me and she was just like, oh my God, it's me. I'm the titty girl. Yeah. And then How did after- she find out though? He must have so said- she said through social media, of course, having like a following on social media, her friends had already, her and her friends had already known that I was hanging out with him. Okay. Like a year before, like when I was actually hanging out with him, they saw on social media that I was like in his house or something. And then actually after we talked about it on our podcast, she reached out. Yeah. So then we had the snooping thing. Then mm-hmm. she reached out and she was just like, oh, I didn't want to reach out to you a year ago, but like I've been knowing. Um, so it was just like, it was really funny. And of course, like him and I had like three dates. I wasn't emotionally invested. Right. It was just like a funny situation. I was like, oh my God, of course this would happen to me. I'm like, you said, I hope you said goodbye. Oh, I did. I was like, I don't think this is going to be. Why is that his fault? Oh, it's there's something wrong if somebody's taking pictures of of of, of well, woman. He might have not taken it. She probably gave it to him. I don't know. It's still but something he kept wrong. Them. He kept them. He kept them. He kept them. He kept yeah, them. Something and wrong. The, yeah. And that's like, the key. I kind of, I was never really. I mean, he had been chasing me for like years and years and years. And there was something like my gut was like, I'm just not into it. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like it was just honestly like my best out to be like. Cause at the time nothing went wrong except these titty pics. And I was like, <laughs> I was like maybe this is a great entrance to leave. I'm yeah. like, I think this <laughs> is a great good entrance excuse. to exit. Yeah. yeah. And then he was like, like begging me for like weeks not to like end it with him. And I was just like, and he's not happy that we told that story. <laughs> no, it's your story to tell, honestly. And like, we're not mentioning I, never, I didn't say no. your name. We would never no. mention names. No, right. that's like our biggest thing. We're like, we will tell our experiences, but we right. make it clear that it's our experiences. And we're not right. going like, to say the person's like occupation or like right. name just in case people can piece something together. Cause but he knows him. Yeah, yeah. He, he knew and he was very upset. And I was like, no one will know that this right. is you except for you. So yeah. you're only hurting your own feelings right here because you know you were in the wrong exactly so what would you have done if I texted you a picture and was like this is what I just found I would have said get out of the apartment immediately and put the pictures back in the drawer yeah and do not ever pick up his call again because there's something wrong with really Mm -hmm. Hmm. yep he actually threatened to sue us yeah yeah he did like um you're gonna be hearing from my lawyer and, and like, we're we like, never, we what? never heard from a lawyer. <laughs> to be, you, tell your, you know, I'm like, there's literally nothing that you can do. No. We didn't say your name. You're not. Yeah. But it, there was some drama it behind that. One. Crazier, yeah. crazier. And yeah, of course, I was like, that was our first podcast. I'm like, of course, like <laughs> it just got it got it got pretty wild after that. Yeah. Tiffany, can you share your story? What was mine? I know I had one, but if she doesn't have one. Well, yeah, if you don't have a snooping story, <laughs> that is snooping something that you've done in a relationship or do you try to stay out of it? Oh, I'm a big snooper. I love, I'm very, um, like, I think everybody's super suspicious, super sketchy. I'm like a true Scorpio. So I'm like, somebody's always like working one over on me. I feel like, right. um, so she's I'm, the FBI agent in the family. Yeah. And sure. like people will come to me and be like, Hey, can you like, look up this guy, find yeah. everything about him, like family members, past occupations, like everything. I can like when I match a guy and I just have a first name, I can find out like his whole <laughs> the talent. Inspect the Clouseau. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's totally. actually like scary. Like if I ever need any info on anyone, I'm like she's like my police officer. I'm like I just start mm-hmm. charging people now because everybody's just like, hey, here's the info. Yeah. I need information. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah, like awesome. I think you have a business here, like on the <laughs> <Right>? side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> private investigator. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to know, like, 
your relationship with your grandma? Because we ask all of our guests, um, were you or are you close with your grandma? And have you or ever grandfather? Don't be or sexist. Gra- yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, what's your relationship like with them? Yeah. So our mom's mom is one of our best friends. She's so fun. We spend every Sunday with them. My mom makes dinner and they come over to our house and we spend like every weekend with them. They live. So we used to live like three doors down from them on the beach. So when we were kids, we grew up like going to their place all the time. They were always at our place. It was super amazing growing up like that. And then now we only live like 30 minutes away from each other for the most part, unless we're here, Lexi's here or um, but yeah, we spend every Sunday and then we see them throughout the week. But our grandma is like one of our best friends. We call it, so we call her Nana. I love like talking to my grandparents because I feel like they've lived in such a different time. Like everything is just changing so quickly. Even for me, like I'm like with all these like new apps and stuff, I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> so like, I love just talking to my grandparents because times have changed so much. I was actually just talking about this with a friend the other day. And it's just like, yeah, hearing my grandparents' stories and stuff is just the best. We love like the older generation and we learn so much from them. And even when we were younger, like we always spent time with our parents, our parents' friends. Like we really love hearing stories of people who have lived in like a different time than us. So like even people on the street, like will be mm-hmm. like, oh my God, you're the coolest person ever. Like tell us everything. Yeah. yeah. What do you think we're missing most now when it comes to like the old fashioned values that we've kind of lost? for me I think the chivalry yeah I'm like a big well like we were talking about earlier just like coming in and saying hello when you're on a date or something like that I feel like that's really important to me because we kind of do like having those old school values Mm -hmm. are so important to me like just like little things like somebody orders me a car I'm like oh my god that's so nice or Mm -hmm. opening my door for me I feel like these like things that were so simple back then and just so natural are so unnatural now so I would say for my like for me it's definitely the chivalry Mm -hmm. I agree I always expect like a date to come and pick me up at my house we drive together like I've never met somebody somewhere obviously like for safety reasons if you don't want to give somebody your address and whatever but I always know the guys well enough before I actually go out with them I have a big screening process in my FBI self (laughs) good good good. yeah but I always expect people to like come and pick me up and I definitely think like the chivalry and like the old school like yeah just the values Lex was on a date a few weeks ago and yeah it it ended up being a long long date and you know she was, was texting like, which me one was this? Yeah. <laughs> like me. she was texting me and and everything and I was like you know it is getting a little late like you should be heading home soon and he ended up um ubering with her home mm-hmm. and he walked her to, to the door and I was like now that is a gentleman I like that boy yeah yeah yeah, that yeah. Was nice. yeah, yeah. and like even just like the gentleman, like, obviously I'm a very independent woman, but even just having like a boy pay for your meal. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's just like, it's so like nice. Yeah. Instead of yeah. being like, oh, like let's split the bill. It's like, I'm fine with that also. And like, if we've been dating for a long time, obviously like I'm cool with it. But like on the first couple of dates, I'm like, no, I want a boy to be like, open my door for me, pick me up, pay for my meal. Like, I'm just very, yeah, I miss, I, I like those values. Mm-hmm. I do think that that has to come naturally though, because there's nothing worse than when somebody's like faking chivalry yeah. and then like five dates in, they're like a completely different person. Yeah. So you have to be careful about that too. When people are like, oh, well, it's more for you. And then five dates later, they're like, yeah, slamming it in your face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. The thing is like, if guys know that we like these things, how does some people not do it? That's what my mind Because they don't me. care. They yeah, don't, they don't care. There, there are some people who are just such narcissists. They're just about themselves, and those are the ones you have to stay away from. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you learn that as you, uh, you know, date them for a little bit. If you see that this is in a whole, if they're selfish, then why bother? Don't continue the relationship. It's not going to. I don't know, Shannon. Do you? Nobody changes. What What really Absolutely. happens? Uh, you become more entrenched in your in your. This is probably the biggest thing that we disagree on. I, I always think people can change. Nobody changes. They know they might know. change their shoes and they might change their jackets, but they don't change their personalities. It really doesn't. I mean, unless they, they love you enough. Unless no, they follow that's. Them. I always say. I always say. I'm like. I'm like. I feel like if you stick to your kind of like. No, this is what I need. This is what I request. This is what I deserve. And I can also give it back to you. I feel like it's like, if they don't do that for other people, maybe it's just like, no, this is what I demand. If you, if you want me bad enough, if you love me enough, you'll rise to the occasion, but I'm not going down to your level. You can either have me and rise or don't have me and 
Have Good fun, girl. <laughs> I'm just my kind of girl. I like that. This is, this is a new thing. <laughs> right, right. Starting today, starting right now. Yeah. <laughs> this conversation really opened my eyes. Just <laughs> Uh, so I want to end the episode with Grandma Gail's old fashioned dating quiz. We give this to all of our guests. Um, so we'll just go through a few things and it will deem whether you're an old fashioned, more traditional dater or more of a modern dater. Perfect. Since there's three of you, maybe um, if you can keep track for yourselves of which you answer. Because <laughs> we I messed up on um, math the other day and it was really embarrassing. <laughs> Um, okay, so the first one is, would you rather receive a call from the guy you're dating or a text? A call. Text. I mean, I don't think I'm playing, am I? I mean, <laughs> I mean it's a hypothetical. Or okay, a hypothetical text. I hate the phone. <laughs> is it two against one? Um, would you sleep with someone on the first date? I never have just because I'm more like, I'm like, no, you need to work hard for it. I think especially <laughs> because in my industry and especially now with social media, it's like, there's so many people that are, um, how do I say it? Like, like they love the idea of like who I am instead, you know what I mean? So I feel like a lot of people are like really great on the first date and then like they just slack after a couple more dates. So I definitely feel like, no, you gotta, you gotta wait. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think all the power in the world to people who yeah. do, but not me. No, gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Unanimous. Um, dating apps or setups? We kind of talked about this. Setups. I think ideally setups, but it's kind of nice to be able to like find something on your own, you know? Oh, setups. So, oh, wait, what, what is my answer? answer? Um, I, I guess. Uh, I don't I know. I feel like you're a dating app girl because you like to do research. Okay, I'll say dating apps. Yeah. yeah. And I would say setup. Mm hmm move in together before getting engaged or wait until after you're engaged move in right away as soon as I can because I want to know if you're a psycho like really? I want to know yeah like if you start to annoy me after like a couple months of living together I don't want to marry you I don't want to spend the rest of my life annoyed move in ASAP so no ring no I know it's gonna come I'm like uh, yeah. to me it's like date move in ring marriage to me it's like date move in get a dog, <laughs> get a dog, and then ring, then marriage, then children, and happily We say after. the dog thing now because we just got a puppy, and it's the hardest thing in the world. We're, like, shared, like, mothers. We have shared custody. That's like co-parenting. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so it's hard. It's so difficult, and I, like, the literally, our best friend just had a baby as well, and, like, she's, like, oh, I swear you guys get more sleep, or no, I get more sleep than you guys, because she's, like, She's like, oh, my baby sleeps like great and our puppy awful for like the first while. I was like, no, I need to know if a guy is a psycho before I have children. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, we would have gone differently. We would have expected the ring, right? No. No. Yes. A hundred percent. Oh, absolutely. Oh, like me. No, you. <laughs> I don't know what you expect. I can't get over what you expect. <laughs> I mean, if that ring isn't on your finger, there better be oh. no sleeping over. Absolutely. Yeah. Did absolutely. you guys live together when you were engaged no. or married? We married. We got engaged That's and crazy. we didn't move in together until after the wedding. Right. I can't put a ring on my yes. finger and no man in my house. Yeah, no. Literally. That's crazy. Yeah. That's wild good for you that's a bigger that's the biggest change now i think don't you th i mean i, oh, I really must say, wouldn't we first of all our families would have never tolerated that and we would just never have done it, it was out of the norm um yeah but i don't yeah. think i i think the living together after a little bit together if you don't have the ring they're within two months of, of living and if you still don't have the ring say goodbye it's too yeah. much yeah, i agree Fair. i would I expect the ring very quickly yeah i would i would expect yeah. it with that year lease I think yeah, if I don't have it within that one year lease period, I'm not renewing it. <laughs> good idea. That's a good pro plan. Yeah. <laughs> Lexi, I feel like you could be a comedian. I'm so I would like, be so funny. I feel like I'm like really funny. Like I'm not, I don't, I don't like purposely, I'm not like out here like telling jokes. I feel right. like I'm really, like silly. Like these two are so funny and like just like naturally witty. But, like I just like come out randomly. No, she's she's like, you're hilarious. She's so funny. I laugh all day. I'm like, Lexi, you say the funniest thing sometimes. And it's so like unexpected. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, so the last one in our game, we actually kind of talked about this, but that the man should pay for the date or versus, you know, alternating. Yes, yeah, no, 100%. man pays. Even when actually we're like in a relationship, 
no I'm like I will pay for the cute things like coffee dates Mm -hmm. random random little lunches like no you are paying for my dinner dates and you two are both really good gift givers so they're very thoughtful girls so like if they see something you know regardless of special occasion they'll like Mm -hmm. you know buy a little something so they're very thoughtful that way so I think that I always say though it's so expensive to be a girl it's like my guy is pulling up to a date and he has like maybe a little bit of like gel in his hair or something and he like (laughs) half-ass showered but I spent like a lot of money on this. Like I spent <laughs> time, money, makeup products. Like you should pay for my date. Yeah, yeah true. Good idea. Like, for a bill is probably more expensive than this dinner date <laughs> yeah. you're going to be paying. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Um, I think you guys got more traditional than modern actually. I think yep. so too. Yeah, we're definitely more of a, more of a traditional family, even though sometimes I feel like we don't seem like it because yeah. we are very like independent. We're very like, but no, we're very traditional. I'm like, I want a traditional, nice tattooed relief. guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the two T's. Right. That's what I think. Well, thank you guys so, so much for joining us. Um, tell our listeners how they can follow all of you and your podcast. So you can follow us on Instagram at the six and nine podcast. At six and nine podcast. Yeah, the six and nine. Podcast. <laughs> I say everything the. I don't know what my problem at is. Six and at nine six podcast. and nine podcasts. <laughs> and yeah, that's we post on Instagram lots of behind the scenes stuff. We're always posting little clips from our shows. We drop our podcast every Tuesday. Yeah, so you can listen on all podcast streaming platforms. Okay. Thank you guys so much for having us. Thank you so Thank much. You. This was so it. fun. Oh, Thank you, and we love your show. Yes. yes. Hope you guys enjoyed our episode with the Woods. I really thought they were great, Kim. Yeah, me too. And um, check out their podcast, Six and Nine, if you haven't yet. And um, thanks for coming back and listening to us every week. And we have a movie this week, don't we, Kim? For oh, a 50s movie? Yes, 50s movie of the week, Rear Window. Which was fabulous. Alfred Hitchcock, 1954. And... It's about snooping in a way, which is why we're doing it. They told all their snooping stories. And it's not one of my favorite movies because there's not that much romance in it. But wasn't it Grace Kelly? Yeah. Grace yeah. Kelly was gorgeous. She was so beautiful in yeah. that. So enjoy, everybody. And you know how to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, at Excuse My Grandma. And subscribe to our podcast if you haven't yet. Tell your friends. Give us five stars. And we will see you next week. Bye.